And this is part six. And we going to get into it. We going to get in to all the animosity that the Messiah received as he came to give the eternal laws that the Father gave in the beginning and broke it down to simplicity. Do unto others as ye will have done unto you. Others include the animals. Why are we excluding them? It's because of the constructed reality that you were born and bred in. You were born and raised in this corrupted society that taught you it's okay to murder innocent creation. You won't even bring yourself to watch the torture and the agony that these animals are going through as you want to continue to feast upon their dead flesh. You don't care what they're going through because if you cared, you wouldn't keep shunning the videos that are out there for free for you to check out and see what it's like for these animals on these slaughterhouse farms. On these slaughterhouse grids that are built upon ley lines. These people are sacrificing to demons and devils. And you wonder why the earth is so wicked. You wonder why murders and all of these things have increased drastically. You wonder why diseases and illnesses and all these things are plaguing humanity. It's simple. It's the innocent bloodshed and the feasting upon their flesh and blood. I get a little annoyed, but not to the people that I know have not heard this before. I get annoyed with the stiff neck ones. The ones that have heard this and they fight against it. Those that are blaspheming against the spirit of truth. Those that blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. They're sealing their own fate and they don't even know it. This is how their conscience gets seared with a holler urn. You got to be careful when you speak against someone that's literally walking in the Ruach. Literally have changed their life around to follow the good shepherd. You can't just give him lip service. That doesn't work. That's superficiality. That's fake. You, 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 you claim that he knows your heart. You, well, you damn right he does. You damn right he knows your heart. That is far away from him. These people service me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. The simple ones are in the so-called Holy Bible. Thou shalt not kill. Spill no innocent blood. All throughout your so-called Holy Bible. But I am bringing you the meat as the Spirit gives utterance. I'm bringing the fullness of this so that you can understand who are the Israelites. There is a purpose for us upon this earth. To diminish the lives that we have been born and bred in. That we were born and raised in. The whole world has been lied to. Well, there's a specific people that the Father has chosen to rise in these last days. And speak his truth. Speak the truth to the earth. To the world. To all who has the ears to hear. The heart to receive. And the eyes to see. That's the true purpose of the Israelites. And I'm giving you the, the end. The, the last part that I was going to bring in. And I will bring it to, to fullness. Believe that. I will bring it to fullness. But I'm flowing by the spirit. So however the spirit is leading and guiding me, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to do.
there's been so many lies that we have been taught. We have been taught blasphemous lies against the Creator, against the Almighty, against Yahushua HaMashiach, who came to the earth. We completely dismiss the earthly mother who nourishes us. The things that grow from the earth, our earthly mother literally nourishes us. The angels of the water literally quenches us. We don't even pay attention to all of the things that serve us upon the earth that was created for us because we're too busy being selfish me 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 all about me this superficial reality that we live in i'm not i'm not mad at my listeners i'm really not i don't i don't want people to think that i'm coming across like i'm like i'm mad at you guys because you guys if you're listening to this video if you're listening to my videos and you've subscribed that means that you're listening to the spirit because that's the only reason I'm doing this because I'm led to do so by the spirit. And you can look these things up yourself. You can be led by the spirit just like I'm led by the spirit. All you got to do is listen to that small, still voice within you. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's not complicated. It's very, very simple. All right. And this is uh, John chapter 14. And Yahushua answered, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you. Being yet present with you. Understand. How are we able. To keep his sayings. And his commandments. When. A lot of it. Was not included. In the so called holy bible. Just a little something for you to ponder on there for a minute. You need to understand. Why do we have the spirit? There was a purpose. It, it, it was a specific reason that Yahushua had to send us the spirit of truth. Because people were corrupting the word of the Most High. Men were corrupting the true eternal laws that the Most High gave. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not spill blood. Thou shalt not kill. All throughout the Bible, he has a problem with bloodshed, particularly innocent bloodshed. We can clearly see that the Creator is not happy with innocent bloodshed. All throughout the Bible, he is against it. But yet they take out critical things that the Messiah taught. They take out critical details about the life of the Israelites. How they learned a wicked device when they were captive in Egypt. All these things. Yet you want to hold tight to the beliefs that's been constructed in your mind. And you fight against breaking free of that. You're fighting against your own self. Why you do that? You fighting against the ones that love you. Why you do that? We are going to reiterate this Luke chapter 4 because I'm going to bring fullness to it with the leading of the Spirit. Okay? So we're bringing it back. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 16, starting. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. 
And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Most High is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Most High. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in a synagogue were fasted on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And as he is skipping so much, and all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they all said, Is this not Joseph's son? Alright, and I know that I went over that in the last video, part 5. But now, we are about to get the fullness of it. Let me go ahead and get this part right here, which was left out of the so-called Holy Bible, okay? Alright, so now we're going to be reading from the Essene Gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach. And we're going to read, Yahusha fulfills the scroll of Isaiah, okay? So now we're going to read the full version that the KJV left out. Conveniently. All right. And once again, Yahushua visited the territory of his parents, known by some as Nazareth. And as his custom was, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up so that he might read from Isaiah's scroll. And there in a small meeting place was the scroll of the prophet Isaiah given unto him. And when Yahushua had unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written and prophesied of him, saying, The Spirit of the Most High is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the holy way to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty and freedom all that are bound, to preach the acceptable year of the Most High. And Yahushua rolled up the scroll and gave it back to, a, to the attendant, and sat down. And he began saying unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled, yea, even as ye have heard with ears of flesh. For I say unto ye all, I am the Hamashiach who Isaiah spake of and did know, and the poor of the land are they of humble heart and spirit who listen to my voice, even as I heal the brokenhearted, who know not the root from whence they came, but do know I came to heal them with truth and mercy. Yea, I preach deliverance to the captives, even all of mankind enslaved to Satan's unmerciful laws, and of angels imprisoned in darkness, and to the blind. I restore unto them light, my holy law, that they might know the truth and see, both spiritual and physical marvels of the Most High Power. And those bound, yea, even every beast of the field, every flying creature of the heaven, I set free. For I come also to put an end to every form of sacrifice in my Father's holy name. For at no time did my Father, Mother, power in heaven acts such cruelty, but one and only a man the pure oblation. Yeah, I am come to fulfill all spoken of me, and so shall all be fulfilled through my presence. And those in the synagogue began to question among themselves just who this man could really be. And then some of them brought unto Yahusha a blind man to test his power. And they said unto Yahusha, Heal this man now, even as thou hast healed the Gentiles in faraway lands, yea, even in India and Egypt, for they have heard of your travels to many lands, and the marvels thou worketh among the peoples. And Yahushua, looking upon the blind man, perceived his unbelief, and also the unbelief of those that brought him, and he perceived their evil desire to ensnare him. And on this account, Yahushua could do no mighty work on their behalf. Their unbelief and unworthiness of the Holy Spirit was manifest in their conduct. And Yahushua said unto them, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own territory, for ye believe me not to 
be the promised holy one, but ye know neither doth the physician work cures upon them that know him. And Yahushua went on to relate the examples of Isaiah and Elijah as further testimony unto them. But when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath and wanted to do harm unto Yahushua. But Yahushua passing through the midst of them went his way and escaped their evil intentions. And thus did Yahushua show unto them his rejection as grand prophet in a time to come by Israel, and that the Gentiles will go forth and venture ahead of Israel in upholding all that is holy and pure, and spread the word of truth unto many men and nations. But they understood not the meaning of Yahushua's words, for their hearts were evil and hard. All right. So give me just a second. And we see how that's that's even more full. That's fullness of it. You see how the KJV left much of that all. Why did they leave all that out? Why did they leave out the part about the animals? How he come to redeem the animals and set the animals free? Yet they're still in bondage to this day. They were placed back under bondage as the time of the Gentiles has been on this earth. And the knowledge of the Most High was not on this earth. Wickedness was allowed to reign supreme on this earth. But the spirit of Yahusha is back in this earth. The spirit that he said that he would send unto us is back in this earth. He has risen up his people. He has placed within us his true laws, his true commandments, the eternal laws that can nobody freaking diminish, can nobody freaking do away with, can nobody say that, that his eternal laws are done away with. Because everybody knows that sun's still in the sky. All them ordinances still in the sky. All, all, everything is still upheld under the eternal law of the Most High. Except for mankind. As we have sought to do our own will. And follow the traditions of our forefathers. And all of the belief systems that we have been handed down. From generation to generation to generation. Alright, so give me just a second, let me check something out. Just a second. Isaiah chapter eight. Wow. <clears throat> 
is identical. Okay, so we're going to check out the Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 18. All right. Now, Yahushua was not received well among his own people. So, that's where we're, we're continuing, basically, from part 5 into part 6. We're still building it up about how he was received. We're, we're bringing that in about how he was received among the people and how he was not received very well. They wanted to hold on to their traditions and the laws of their forefathers. You know, the laws that they were taught all their life. Okay? So, <clears throat> I don't really want to read this whole chapter. Um, because quite frankly, a lot of them dang names I can't even pronounce. Mm, okay, yeah, I'm not even going to attempt that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I kind of really just want to start where it says the Lord spake also unto me again saying so let's start here at verse 5 so this is 2nd Nephi chapter 18 starting at verse 5 okay <clears throat> now Yahushua spake also unto me again saying for as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh that go softly and they rejoice in Rezin and Ramanella's son. Okay. Um, basically what's in my spirit is that they are refusing the, the rivers of living water. So, you know, as he as he comes to teach them the true eternal laws of the Most High, they are rejecting that. There, a lot of them are rejecting that. The scribes and the Pharisees, they're rejecting that. The stiff-necked ones, they're rejecting the rivers of living water. The living words that he came to teach us. You know, the, the living laws he came to teach us. Um, and that they were wanting to hold fast to their traditions and the laws that they were taught from their forefathers. But their forefathers were wicked. Okay? Now going on to verse 7. Now therefore behold, Yahushua bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory. And he came over, up over all his channels, and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for the Most High Power is with us. So basically, this is saying to me in my spirit that the rela the reality that we grew up in, the reality this reality that we grew up in, everything that we were taught, it needs to shatter. It needs to break into pieces. Okay, it, we we need to be we need to become like little children. Forget everything that you've been taught. Forget everything that you think that you know. Okay? Give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. You know? Listen to the spirit of truth. Listen to the Ruach. Allow it to shatter that false reality that we've been raised in. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. And it shall not stand, for the Most High Power is with us. So, it will literally shatter this reality that we were born and bred in, okay? For the, for Yahushua spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all to whom it 
to whom this people shall say, A confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify Yahushua of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And if he be for a sanctuary, but, a, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. See, that's how they were seeing him. They were viewing him as a stumbling block. They were they were viewing him like he was coming to take away the law. Uh, they, that, 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 that he was coming to, to, to bring a stumbling block. But he was coming to set them free. <laughs> the father never gave animal sacrifice. The father never gave 613 freaking laws. These bondage laws that literally put them in bondage. He never gave all to that. But these people seen him as a stumbling block as he came to break those laws into pieces. Okay? They were seeing him as an offense. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal up the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon Yahusha that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. See, what my people wondering, well, why why is innocent black men being shot down dead in the street? They're unarmed and yet they're being murdered like dogs in the street. And wicked police are not even holding themselves guilty. They're holding themselves not guilty. They're murdering us innocently. We think that is innocently. But the Father has turned his head from us. Well, we got to ask ourselves, why did he turn his face from us? Why did he turn his face from Jacob? It's very important to find out why. It's, it's very important to find out why he sent the Gentiles to destroy us. He literally sent them to destroy us. And we're going to get into that later. Because we're going to go over all the curses that Israel ha ha it's been foretold that Israel will go through. His true chosen people where it was foretold what we will go through. For a sign and a, for a wonder will be upon our seed. Okay? And there's a reason why. There's a reason why. But yet my people want to sit there and hold hatred in their hearts for the Gentiles and what they did to us. But they don't want to look at who sent them against us. Who is the one that sent them against us? The Most High Almighty. Satan didn't send them. But yes, Satan did use them. To do whatever he wanted to do, he got his chance. He got his chance to destroy many of us. But it was because our people were wicked and it was because they did not want to listen. They didn't want to listen to the Messiah when he came. Okay. And I will wait upon the Most High. I will wait upon Yahusha that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. And I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom, the, whom Yahusha has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel from Yahusha of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their power for the living to hear from the dead? Why are you listening to your wicked ass forefathers and their dead laws? Yahushua came to break those laws, but yet you're still wanting to hold tight to them. To the law and to the testimony. And if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. This is the true law. This is the true law, the eternal law that the Most High gave. Okay, this is his true gospel. This is the true gospel that Yahushua came to the earth to teach us. Okay. And they shall pass through it. Harley. Be stead and hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their power and look upward, and they shall look unto the earth and be and behold trouble, and they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness and dimness of anguish, and shall be driven to darkness. We wonder why such atrocities have been against 
the children of Israel, us so-called Negroes. We wonder why it's been hell on earth for us here in the Americas and pretty much all over the earth, but primarily here in the Americas. It's prophecy, okay? And the same thing is in here in Isaiah chapter 8. And I'm not going to reread it again, but I'm just going to point you to where it's at. Is Isaiah chapter 8, starting at verse 5, all the way through verse 22. It has every single verse in there. Identical. Okay, give me just a second. And then the very next chapter is uh, is identical in Isaiah as well. Chapter 9. And this will be chapter 19 in the Book of Mormon. 2 Nephi. Okay. So give me just a moment. The people in darkness will see a great light. Unto us a child is born. He will be the Prince of Peace and will reign on David's throne. We're going to compare Isaiah 9, 559 BC, 559 to 545 BC. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be as it was in her vexation, when at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict by the way of the Red Sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. I've been walking in darkness my whole freaking life. I've been wondering all my life. Why is, why is things the way that they are? Always questioning this system. Bucking against it, not knowing why, not understanding why. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in the harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. I rejoice in Yahushua HaMashiach for revealing himself and his true laws unto me. For dusting me off and caring enough about me to receive me. Met me where I was. And he broke the yoke for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and a government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of government and peace there is no end. Of increase of government and peace there is no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahusha of hosts will perform this. Yahushua sent his word unto Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are falling down, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are falling down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Hmm. This freaking world. The way that they 
basically tried to change us and how and how they portrayed us to the world. Therefore, Yahusha shall set up the adversaries of Rezin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before it and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. Did that not happen? Oh yeah, that that definitely happened. And history repeats itself. And even with Christopher Columbus and all of them that came over here raping and pillaging and just terrorizing, taking whatever they wanted, spilling much blood. They were, were on a frenzy killing our people. devour Israel with an open mouth for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still why was he so angry towards us why did he allow such a horrific atrocities to happen to us we gotta ask ourselves that yeah in out one side of your neck you're saying that the Most High is all-powerful. He's all-powerful. He can do anything and, and all of that. And He can. So tell me. Why is it that He allows us to get shot down dead in the street like dogs? And allow these devils to hold themselves not guilty? If He's all-powerful, why? And He is all-powerful. I'm not, I'm not discounting that. We need to ask ourselves, why isn't He intervening? Why is these Gentiles allowed to do this? Because the Most High is the one that allowed it. The Most High is the one that sent them against us. So we need to find out why, don't we? Okay? Mm -hmm. For all his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still, for the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek Yahusha of hosts. No, they just want to stay stagnant and have anger in their heart towards the ones that are that have been brought against them. The ones that were used to inflict that judgment. But they don't want to find out why they were being judged. Therefore will Yahusha cut off from Israel, head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient, he is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. So the ancient, he is the head. So our, our forefathers, our parents and their parents, you know, our grandparents and their parents and the ancient, they're the head, okay? And the prophet that teaches lies is the tail. That's all your so-called preachers and pastors that went to theology school and all of that. Okay? For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. So we're listening to the false prophets of this world. Getting destroyed left and right. The God you say you serve ain't helping you. The God you say you serve ain't coming to your rescue. You're still getting shot down like dogs in the street while wicked, corrupt police hold themselves not guilty. So where is the God that you say you serve? Why isn't he helping you? Ask yourself that. It's important. You need to understand. Because the God that you serving is not the Almighty. It's not the Most High Almighty. And the reason why he ain't helping you is because you ain't serving him. Okay? For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. You're following the wrong people. You're listening to the wrong voice. Therefore, Yahusha shall have no joy in their young men. Neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For every one of them is a hypocrite. 
and an evildoer, and every mouth spoken folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is still stretched out. For the wickedness, for wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets and the forests. And they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the raft of Yahusha of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. Black on black crime. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. Robberies, murders, injustices against one another. And he shall eat on the left and then they shall not be satisfied. Never happy with the, with what you have. Always got to have more, 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 more. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Oh, you don't think you eating? Think you eating human flesh? You think you eating animal flesh? You think you eating meat? You think you eating meat? You think you eating so called animals? But you eating human. And a lot of what you buying is human. You don't have no idea that that steak that you you eating is not from a human body. You have no idea. You have no idea what the hell you eating when you go to one of these burger restaurants. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, they join together, they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. All this destruction upon the so-called Negro, we gotta find out why. Alright. So, chapter 9 in Isaiah is identical. I'm not going to read it twice. I'm just pointing you and letting you know where the second witness is at. Alright? Wait just a second. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna go on to chapter twenty, okay? Hold on. All right, and just coinciding. Next chapter is gonna coincide with Isaiah chapter ten, okay? <clears throat> All right. Um, and I'm going to give the synopsis here. The destruction of Assyria is a type of destruction of the wicked at the second coming. Few people will be left after Yahushua comes again. The remnant of Jacob will return in that day. Compare Isaiah 10. Okay. And there's another scripture that's on my heart right quick. And I'm about to get that before I read this. <sighs> Hold on. Juggling here, so give me just a second. Okay. All right, the destruction of Assyria is a type of destruction of the wicked at the second coming. Few people will be left. After Yahushua comes again, the remnant of Jacob will return in that day. And we're going to compare Isaiah chapter 10, okay? Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. And that write grievousness 
which they have prescribed. They're writing laws in the Father's name that he never gave. And they're putting it upon the Israelites to follow those laws. Bring two turtle doves. Bring an innocent, unblemished lamb to the slaughter. The Father never commanded such things. He never commanded such wickedness. Okay? Woe unto you. Woe unto you that decree this. Woe unto you that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed to turn away the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. And what will ye do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all that is, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is their indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. I will give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Yeah, you can't blame the ones that are doing it to us when it's the most high almighty power that brought them over here. We, we can't blame them because they, they were just using the father uses dishonorable people and he uses the honorable people he uses us all to do his will okay so yeah he brung this fierce nation from far the Syrians too all of this he brung all of this against us we're focusing our attention on the wrong people why are we why are we trying to hate the the ones that have done the destruction to us and ignore the the almighty power who brung them against us we're still not hearing that small still voice are we we're still a avoiding that we're still avoiding looking in the mirror at our own transgressions and the reason why we're being afflicted i will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath Will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like mire of the streets? Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but in his heart it is to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kalno as Kershemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my as my hand has found it, the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria? Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do Jerusalem and to her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Most High, when, the, when Yahusha has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, by the strength of my hand and by my wisdom have I done these things. <laughs> so, hold on right quick. Let me get a drink. Right back. Because these people, they don't give the most out of credit. These people that have been trotting our people down for the past 500 years, they ain't giving the most high power to credit. They're taking the credit for themselves, saying how powerful they are in and of, in, in of their own strength, in and of their own will. How they are so great. Like, it, it, like the most high didn't have nothing to do with bringing them over here. Remember, we're about to get into it. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, he says he's going to punish the fruit of the stout heart. 
of the king of Assyria. Well, that also includes these Gentiles too. Okay? Because the history repeats itself. And this this went on for many, many ages. Alright? And we're in the end days. And we're in the end days now. We're, we're in prophecy where he's raising up his people. And the Gentiles are receiving this judgment, okay? This judgment right here that's, that, that, that came upon the king of Assyria, okay? And it says, he says, uh, for he saith, by, for like these people, they act like this is by their strength of my hand and by their own wisdom have they, have they done these things. He says, um, they say, because I am prudent. And I have moved the borders of the people, and I've robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Oh, don't that sound just like a damn Gentile? Don't that sound just like a Gentile boasting and bragging in their own freaking power, in their own freaking strength, like it was themselves? Like they didn't have no kind of heavenly power to overtake us? Really? We ran the world, the whole world belonged to us. We were the kings and the, and the queens. We were the priests of the earth. The earth belonged to us. We had land and everything. The father was good to us. But because we transgressed against him, he sent a people that is not even a people to rape, rob, murder, pillage, kill, destroy all over the freaking earth, everywhere that we were. We were on the head and we got put on the tail. We became on the bottom. He gave them the strength to do that. But they don't give him the credit for it. They say in their own heart that this is by my own strength, by my own hand, by my own wisdom have I done these things. For I am prudent and I have moved the borders of the people and have robbed their treasures. And I have put down the inhabitants like a violent man. And my hand stretched found as a nest of the riches of the people, as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. See, they think that they're going to keep their foot on the neck of Zion, and they think they did all of this themselves. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? <laughs> oh my gosh the most high is like really he's like really he look at these gentiles like really you don't give me the praise when i'm the one that created the axe that I mean, you 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 the axe you 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 are the axe but you you acting like you acting like i ain't create you 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 acting like i ain't use you to do what you did so that's why he says he says show an axe Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Shall the saw manifest itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up? Or as if the shaft should lift up itself as if it were no wood? Therefore shall the Most High, the Yahusha of hosts, Sin among his fat ones, leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and shall burn and shall devour his thorns and his briars in one day. And shall consume the glory of his forests and of his fruitful fields, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon Yahusha, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, yeah, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the 
see, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For Yahusha, the almighty power of hosts, shall make a consumption, even determined in all the land. Therefore, thus says Yahusha, the power of hosts, O my people that dwelleth in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And Yahusha of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is the spirit that he said that he was sent to us and it rested upon us. All right. Hold on. Oh, wow. Hold on. I'm going to skip down. Since that was verse... <clears throat> that was verse 27 that I just read. And I'm going to skip on down... To verse... 33. Okay? Behold, Yahusha of hosts. Yahusha of hosts. Behold, Yahusha, the, the Yahusha of hosts shall lop the bow with terror and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down and the haughty shall be humble you gentiles that are boasting against the natural branches oh you about to be hewn down and he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron and lebanon shall fall by a mighty one all right so Wanna, hold on, we'll stop there. I think. Uh, and because I want to go over, because that is a coming prophecy. Well, I mean, it's already in. It's already coming to pass. Alright, now we're going to read. Ooh, just a moment. Alright, this is uh, Baruch chapter 2. I don't know. Oh, man. Mm, let's see. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So this is Baruch chapter 2, and he's wanting me to start at the top. So, <clears throat> therefore Yahusha has made good his word, which he pronounced against us, and against our judges that judge Israel, and against our kings, and against our princes, and against the men of Israel and Judah, to bring upon us great plagues, such as had never happened under the whole heaven, as it came to pass in Jerusalem, according to the things that were written in the law of Moses. Oh yeah, and we're going to bring it out. That a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. Moreover, he had delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are about them, to be a reproach and a desolation among all the people round about where Yahushua has scattered them. Thus we were cast down and not exalted, because we have sinned against Yahushua our power, and have not been obedient and have not been obedient unto his voice to the most high power appertaineth righteousness but unto us and to our fathers open shame as appeareth this day 
For all these plagues are come upon us, which Yahusha hath pronounced against us. Yet have we not prayed before Yahusha that we might turn every one from the imaginations of his wicked heart? Wherefore Yahusha watched over us for evil, and Yahusha has brought it upon us, for Yahusha is righteous in all his works in which he has commanded us. Yet we have not hearkened unto his voice to walk in the commandments of Yahusha that he has set before us. And now, O Yahusha, power of Israel, that hath brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and high arm, and with signs, and with wonders, and with great powers, and with great power, and hast gotten thyself a name as appeareth this day. O Yahusha, our power, we have sinned, we have done ungodly, we have dealt unrighteously in all thine ordinances. O Most High, our power, we have sinned, we have done ungodly, we have dealt unrighteously in all thine ordinances. Let thy wrath turn from us, for we are but few left among the heathen where thou hast scattered us. Hear our prayers, O Father, and our petitions, and deliver us for thine own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away, that all the earth may know that thou art the Most High, our power, because Israel in his posterity is called by thy name. O Yahuwah, look down from thine holy house and consider us. Bow down thine ear, O Yahuwah, to hear us. O Yahuwah, look down from thine holy house and consider us. Bow down thine ear, O Yahuwah, to hear us. Open thine eyes and behold, for the dead that are in graves, whose souls are taken from their bodies, will give unto Yahusha neither praise nor righteousness. But the soul that is greatly vexed, thou goest stopping and feeble, and the eyes that frail in the hungry soul will give thee praise and righteousness, O Yahuwah. Therefore we do not make our humble supplication before thee, O Yahuwah, our power, for the righteousness of our fathers and of our kings, for thou hast sent out thy wrath and indignation upon us, as thou hast spoken by thy servants the prophets, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, Bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon, so shall ye remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. But if ye will not hear the voice of, your, of the Most High to serve the king of Babylon, I will cause to cease out of the cities of Judah, and from without Jerusalem the voice of mirth, and the voice of joy, and the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, and the whole land shall be desolate of of inhabitants but we but we will not hearken unto thy voice to serve the king of Babylon therefore thou hast made good the words that thou spakest by the servants of the prophets namely the that the bones of our kings and the bones of our fathers should be taken out of their place and lo they are cast out to the heat of the day and to the frost of the night and they died in great miseries by famine by sword and by pestilence and the house which is called by thy name, hast thou laid waste, as it is to be seen this day, for the wickedness of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. O Yahuwah, our power, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness, and according to all that is great mercy of thine, and to all that great mercy of thine. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, <clears throat> If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. I have seen before my eyes how that has happened. I see how we are small among the heathen, literally to this day. We are small among the heathen. 
For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah, their almighty power. For I will give them an heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. And think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers which sin before the Most High. See, I understand why we went into captivity. And I have made the conscious choice to turn away from my transgressions that was against the Holy Father. I have chosen to listen to that small, still voice on the inside of me that told me that he never gave us animal sacrifices. And he has shown me, he has led me by the spirit of truth to all these different sources, all these witnesses that line right up to what he said in the beginning will be our diet. And he has never once changed that. But if you want to remain stiff necked, then you're going to be a part of that two thirds. If you're of my seed, if you're of my bloodline, and you don't want, you ain't got the ears to hear this truth, and you hate this truth, well, guess what? You are part of that two thirds that is going to perish. It's going to perish. You're part of that two thirds going to be cast into outer darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right? No. Give me just a second. All right. Because that happened. He sent his spirit in the earth. And he said in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. We are currently in the land of our captivity. I am currently in the land of my captivity. But I remember who I am. And I have made the conscious choice to come back to my almighty power. And to turn away from the transgressions that I was doing against him.